much rather stay in London and see the war. This war is going to be very nasty, Edmund, which is why we're all being sent away. Spoil sports, grown-ups. They are doing it for our sake, Edmund. When the bombs start falling on London... I wish Mother and Nanny could have come with us. I don't think it's fair. They'll be right there, in all the excitement. What's that danger you mean? Don't talk such tosh. We are lucky, Edmund. We are going away deep into the countryside where we'll be safe. Yes, and you know why we'll be safe? Because in the country, nothing ever happens. <laughs> Now the servants will take these. That is their function. One must not deprive people of their function. Everyone has their part to play. Oh. Children. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Good afternoon sir. sir. Oh, yes. Welcome. Welcome to my home, which you must feel is your home as long as you stay here with me. Thank you, sir. Well, it's wartime, I suppose. Even I must make a pretense at military precision. Right. Form a street line there. Very good. Number. From the right. Name? Peter, sir. Susan, sir. I'm Lucy. You have a name too, I trust? Edmund. Sir. Sir. I shall try not to mix you up. Oh, and Mrs. McCready. Yes, Professor. These children have had a long journey. Have their supper served upstairs in their own study. They don't want to sit up and be polite to an old man. Well, I'm sure it would be an inconvenience for the kitchen staff. Oh, how grand that sounds. But these are the kitchen staff. Indeed, all the staff. What do you think? Whatever you say, Professor, your word is law. Is it? Oh, nice. I say, what about the old prof? Trying to be military? He's <laughs> lovely. He's peculiar. Why? Because he's nice. The way he talks. I keep wanting to laugh. Very bad form, Edmund. He has given us a home. I know you don't have to keep on about it. I want to go it. on about please, it. Please, please don't fight. Someone will hear. I shouldn't think so. It's miles from here down to the drawing room. It's the biggest, weirdest house we've ever been in. All those stairs and passages. I think it's spooky. Especially now that it's dark. I think that's the only good thing about the whole business. 
I like this spooky house. I'm sure there are ghosts in every corner. Edmund. What was that? Only an owl. We never heard owls in London. I wonder what other things we'll find here. Hawks. Eagles. Badgers. I'd love to see a badger. I wonder if there are stags. Well, we'll soon know. We've weeks and weeks of holidays ahead. We can start by exploring the grounds and the woods and the fields and everything tomorrow. It would rain, wouldn't it? We can still explore. We'll explore the house. Yes. Every nook and cranny. Excuse me. Goodness gracious me. Are you a fawn? Yes. Yes, I suppose I am. Should I be right in thinking that you are a daughter of Eve? My name is Lucy. But are you... Uh, forgive me. Are you what they call a girl? Of course I'm a girl. A human? Yes. Girls are human. Well, well, this is delightful. Delightful. 
I've never seen a human before. Let me introduce myself. My name is Tumnus, and... How did you get into Narnia? Narnia? What's that? Why, it's where we are. This is the land of Narnia. All that lies between the lamppost and the great castle of Care Paravel on the Eastern Sea. The castle of what? Care Paravel. I don't think you should worry. There's only one of you. And you. You've come from the wild woods of the West. No. I got into the wardrobe in the spare room. Oh, dear. If only I'd worked harder at geography when I was a little fawn at school. You'll think me very ignorant, but I've never heard of the city of Wardrobe, nor the land of Spare Oom. It's just back there, I think. It's summer there. And winter here. It's been winter in Narnia for ever so long. And we shall both catch cold if we stand here talking in the snow. Oh, daughter of Eve, from the far land of Spare Oom, where eternal summer reigns around the bright city of Wardrobe, <laughs> how would it be if you came and had tea with me? I've never taken tea with a form before. Well, then. Really, I suppose I should be getting back. But it's just round the corner, and there'll be toast and sardines. And cake. Not long now. Make yourself at home. House, and that really is a wonderful tea. Do sit, do sit. One for me and one for a friend. <laughs> so, what's it like living in Narnia, Mr. Tumnus? Life was beautiful here once. Midnight dances in the forest. The nymphs who live in the wells and the dryads who live in the trees would come and dance with us, with the fauns. Oh, and the feasting, and the treasure hunting, and the summers. Long, long summers when the woods were green, and the whole forest given up to jollification for weeks on end. But why isn't it like that now? Now it is winter. Endless winter. And always will be, unless... and until... Have 
I've been asleep. I must go home. The others will be wondering what's happened to me. <gasps> Mr. Tumnus, whatever is the matter? Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Please. What is it? Do tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Tumnus, do stop it at once. My old father would never have done a thing like this. I am, you see, I'm a very bad fawn. I don't think you're a bad fawn. I think you're a very good fawn. You're the nicest fawn I've ever met. You wouldn't say that if you knew. I've done a very bad thing taken service under the White Witch. That's how bad I am. I'm in the pay of the White Witch. The White Witch? Who is she? Who? Why, it's she who has all Narnia under her thumb, under her spell. It's she who makes it always winter here. Always winter, never Christmas. Think of that. How awful. But what does she pay you for? Uh, I'm a kidnapper. <laughs> Would you believe that I'm the kind of fawn to meet a poor, innocent human child in the wood, pretend to be friendly with it, and invite it home to my cave, all for the sake of lulling it to sleep and handing it over to the white witch? Oh, I'm sure you wouldn't do anything of the... Yes. You were the child. I had orders from the White Witch that if ever I saw a son of Adam or a daughter of Eve in the wood, I was to catch them and spell them with my flute and make them sleep and hand them over to her. But you haven't. You've told me. But if I don't, she's sure to find out. She'll have my tail cut off and my horns sawn off and my beard plucked out. And if she's extra and specially angry with me, she'll turn me into stone. I'm sorry. I am sorry. But please let me go home. Of course I will. I must. I see that now. I hadn't known what humans were like before I met you. Now that I know you, of course I can't give you up to the witch. But we must be off at once. I'll see you back to the lamppost. I hope you can find your own way from there back to... Spare oom and uh, what was it? A wardrobe? I think I can. We must go very quietly. The whole wood is full of her spies. Even some of the trees are on her side. Come. Sure, you know your way from here. I think I can see the wardrobe door. Then be off home as quick as you can. And can you ever forgive me for what I was going to do? Yes, I can. You won't get into trouble on my account. No, no, certainly not. Farewell, daughter of Eve. Oh, may I keep the handkerchief? Of course. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I've been away hours. Batty, quite batty. But it was just after breakfast when I went into the wardrobe. I was there hours and had tea and Don't I was be 
you be silly, of... Lucy. But you've only just come out of that room a moment ago. You can't have been in there more than a few seconds. She's just making up the story for fun. Aren't you, Lou? <laughs> no, I'm not! It's magic! It's a magic wardrobe! There's a wood inside it, and it's snowing, and there's a form that I had tea with, and a witch, and the place is called Narnia! Come and see! I had tea with a what? Let's have a look. Now, go in and see for yourselves. It's just an ordinary wardrobe. Perfectly ordinary. I could see the back of it. Jolly good hoax, Lucy. <laughs> you really took us in for a moment. <laughs> it's not the hoax! Go. Honestly. Come on, Lou. You've had your joke. Don't you better drop it now. <laughs> Lucy, you must talk to us. Why don't you admit it was all a story? You know I don't lie. I never lie. It would be the easiest thing in the world to say I'd made it all up. But I didn't. No, I shan't. Found you new countries in the cupboard lately. Come on, Lucy. Try this bit. Another wet day. No, here. Oh, Edmund. Hide and seek. Susan, you're it. Why me? Because I'm the eldest. And I say so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Susan come to find you. It's me, Edmund. Lucy? Where are you? I know you're in here somewhere.
I didn't believe you. Pax! Just like a girl. Sulking. Won't accept a fellow's apology. And what, pray, are you? Uh, um, my name's Edmund. Is that how you address a queen? I beg your pardon, I didn't know. Your Majesty. Not know the Queen of Narnia? You shall know us better hereafter. <laughs> well, answer my question, what are you? Please, Your Majesty, uh, uh, I, d I don't know what you mean. I'm at school. Uh, at least I was. It's the holidays now. But what are you? What are you? Are you a great overgrown dwarf that has cut off his beard? Oh, no, Your Majesty. I've never had a beard. I'm a boy. <gasps> a boy? Do you mean... You are a son of Adam. I see you are an idiot, whatever else you may be. Answer my question once and for all, or I shall lose my patience. Are you human? Oh, yes, Your Majesty. And how, pray, did you come to enter my dominions? Please, Your Majesty, I came in through the wardrobe. What do you mean? 
I just opened the door and found myself here, Your Majesty. <gasps> a door. A door from the world of men. I have heard of such things. This may wreck all. He's only one. Easily dealt with. <gasps> Yet, he might know something. My poor child, how cold you look. Come, sit by me on my sledge, and I will wrap a mantle around you, and we will talk. little better? Perhaps something hot to drink, should you like that? Oh. Yes, please. Your Majesty. Hmm. Majesty, it makes me feel warm right down to my toes. But it is dull, son of Adam, to drink without eating. What would you like to eat best in all the world? Turkish delight. Turkish delight? It shall be. But this is a cold place for talking. Let us adjourn. Come. And the White Witch has done nothing to you for letting me go? Hasn't done a thing. Which could only mean she hasn't found out. What can be the matter with her spies? Unless... You don't think they've been waiting for me to come back? To catch both of us? Now, son of Adam, I am eager to know all about you. You are here alone. There are no others with you. I'm not sure, Your Majesty. I have just sister. Well, in fact, I have a brother and two sisters. Two, three, four, <gasps> four! Mm. And where are they? These other three humans? Can't say for sure. One of them, Lucy. You see, nobody believed her when she told us she'd been here and had tea with a fawn. <gasps> anyway, 
We're the only ones in the whole human world to know anything about, what do you call it? Narnia. Four of them. The prophecy of Care Paravel. It's all gone. What? I could eat twice as much. Son of Adam, I should so much like to see your brother and sisters. You must bring them to me. All right. I'll try. Because if you brought them to me, I should give you more Turkish delight. Oh, give it to me now. But I can't. The magic will work only once. It would be another matter if you were in my house. My magic house. I want to go there now. I want more Turkish delight. It is a lovely place, my house. Except for one thing. I have no children. I would so much like a nice boy I could bring up as a prince. He would be king of Narnia when I'm gone. He would wear a gold crown and eat Turkish delight all day long. And as you are much the cleverest and handsomest young man I have ever met, I wish to make you the prince. When? You bring the others to visit me. Why can't we go there now? Oh, but if I took you there now, I shouldn't see your brother and sisters. You must have courtiers and nobles. I will make your brother a duke and your sisters duchesses. I shouldn't bother. There's nothing special about them. I could bring them another time. But once in my house, you will forget everything. No, 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 no. You must go back to your own country now and come to me another day with them. Otherwise. <laughs> but I don't even know the way back to my own country. Why, that is easy. Do you see that lamp? I think. Somewhere beyond that lamp lies the world of men. And now look the other way. Do you see those two hills? Yes. My house is between those hills. So, next time, remember, lamppost, wood, hills, my house. But you must bring the others with you. I might have to be very angry if you came alone. And by the way, don't tell the others about me. Make it a lovely surprise. If your sister has met one of those fawns, she may have heard nasty stories about me that might make them afraid to come. Fawns will say anything you know. So, let's keep it a secret. a Turkish delight to eat on my way home. No! No! You must wait till next time. Just think how good it will taste then. magic wardrobe. I'll say I'm sorry if you like. But where on earth have you been? I've been looking everywhere for you. With Mr. Tanner's the fawn. And the white witch has done nothing to him for letting me go. So perhaps, perhaps everything is going to be alright after all. The white witch? Who's she? A perfectly terrible person. She calls herself the Queen of Narnia, although she has no right to. 
and all the fawns and dryads and naiads and dwarfs and other animals, at least all the nice ones, simply hate her. She does all kinds of horrible things. This is her doing. She made a magic, so it is always winter in Narnia. Always winter, but never Christmas. What does this witch look like? She drives about on a sleigh with a crown on her head and her magic wand in her hand. Lucy, who told you all this stuff about a white witch? Mr. Tums the fawn. Oh, well, you know fawns, they'll say anything. Can't believe what they say. Who said so? Everybody knows that. Ask anybody you like. Edmund, I am glad you got in there too. Girls will have to believe in Narnia now that both of us have been there. Won't it be fun? Fun for you. I'll have to admit before all the others that you were right. And I suppose they'll be on the side of the fawns and the dryads and those those watsits. Well, whose side could you be on? They're the only people we know there. You look awful, Edmund. You look as though you're going to be sick. Oh, come on. What's it all about? Tell us, Edmund. Uh, oh, yes, sir. Lucy and I have been playing a silly game, pretending that her story about the country and the wardrobe was all true. Nonsense, of course. There's nothing there at all, really. Oh. What's the matter with her? That's the worst of these young kids. Look here, shut up! First you're perfectly beastly to Lucy about her wardrobe nonsense. But now you go playing games and setting her off again. But it's all rubbish. Of course it is. That's just the point. Lucy was perfectly all right when we left home. But down here, she seems to be going off her head. Or else turn into the most frightful liar. Whichever it is, what good do you think you'll do by jeering and nagging at her one minute and then encouraging her the next. But I thought that... You didn't think at all. It was just spite. Do stop. It's not going to make things any better having a row between you two. Let's go to find Lucy. I don't care what you think. And I don't care what you say. You can tell the professor. Or you can write to Mother. You can do anything you like. I know I've been in there. And I know I've met a fawn. And, and I wish I'd stayed there. It was much nicer there with him than it is here with you. I don't think we should worry Mother. Certainly not. Um. Well. How nice. Peter and Susan. We don't mean to interrupt. Oh, I am always, I'm afraid, absolutely delighted to be interrupted. If one were never interrupted, life would be nothing but work and study. No fun at all. I am at your disposal. Pull up some chairs. <laughs> Hey, 
him? You know I did. And so he wondered if he could advise us. Because we don't know what to do. Hmm. How do you know your sister's story is not true? But Edmund said they'd only been pretending. Oh, that is a point which certainly needs consideration, very serious consideration. But if you'll excuse my asking the question, does your experience lead you to regard your brother or your sister as the more reliable? I mean, which is the more truthful? Well, that's just a funny thing, sir. Up to now, I'd have said Lucy every time. Mm -hmm. In general, I'd say the same as Peter. But, well, this couldn't be true. A magic country. And a wood. And a fawn. Well, that is more than I know. But a charge of lying against somebody you have always found truthful is a very serious thing, a very serious thing indeed. We were afraid it mightn't even be lying. We thought there must be something wrong with her. Madness, you mean? Oh, you make your minds easy about that. One only has to look at her and talk to her to know that she is not mad. But then... Oh, logic. Why don't they teach logic at these schools? There are only three possibilities. Either your sister is one, telling lies, or two, she is mad. Or three, she is telling the truth. One, you say that your sister never lies. Two, it is perfectly obvious she is not mad. So for the moment, until any further evidence turns up, we must assume three. She is telling the truth. But how could it be true, sir? Why do you say that? Well, for one thing, if it was real, why doesn't everybody find this country every time they look into the wardrobe? When we looked, there was nothing there. Even Lucy didn't pretend there was. What has that to do with it? Sir, if things are real, they are there all the time. Ah, they? But Lucy had no time to have gone anywhere, even if there was such a place. She came running after us the moment we were out of the room. It was less than a minute, but she pretended she'd been away for hours. That is the very thing which makes her story most likely to be true. If there really is a door in this house that leads to some other world, I, I must warn you, this is a very strange house. Even I know very little about it. I would not be at all surprised if that other world had a time of its own. However long you stayed there, it would never take up any of our time. And I don't think many girls of Lucy's age would invent such an idea themselves. You mean, there really could be other worlds all over the place? Well, nothing is more probable. Oh, I wonder what they do teach them at these schools. But what are we to do? My dear young lady, there is one plan which no one yet has suggested which is well worth trying. What's that? We might all try minding our own business. So, no jeering, no sarcasm. We none of us to say a word to Lucy about it. And in my opinion, we should all keep away from that room and that wardrobe. Agreed? Lots of fuss about nothing. All right, agreed. Well, where did you leave it? I have told you you are to keep out of the way whenever I have people in the house. Shoo! Evacuees from London. Oh. Look out! Here comes the McCready and a whole gang of people. Shop's the word! Thank you. 
I'm sorry I didn't believe you. I am too. What should we do now? Well, we go and explore the wood, of course. Not before you put these boots on. What? They're in the wardrobe. But these things aren't ours. No. But it is cold. And it isn't as though we're taking them out of the house. We shan't even be taking them out of the wardrobe. I suppose that this whole country is in the wardrobe. Way. Shouldn't we be bearing a little more that way if we're heading for the lamp post? So you were here, and all the time you made out Lucy was telling lies. Of all the poisonous little beasts. I'll pay you all out for this, you pack of stuck-up self-satisfied prigs. going anyway. To see Mr. Thomas the Fawn, of course. is cold and damp. It hasn't been lived in for days. Not since the last time I was here. Oh. What is this? Is there a message on it? Yes, there is. But I can't read it in this light. is under arrest and awaiting trial on a charge of high treason against Her Imperial Majesty Jardis, Queen of Narnia, Chatelaine of Care Paravel, Empress of the Lone Islands, etc. Also of comforting Her Majesty's enemies, of harboring spies, and, above all, of fraternizing with humans. 
signed by me, Morgren, captain of the secret police. Long live the queen! Tumnus is under arrest for harboring spies and fraternizing with humans. Signed by me, Morgan, Morgan captain, captain of, of the, the secret, secret police. Long live the queen. I don't think that I'm going to like this place. Who is this queen, Lucy? She's not a queen at all. She's a horrible witch, the white witch. She made an enchantment over the whole country of Narnia. So it is always winter, yet never Christmas. I wonder if there's any point in going on. It's getting colder every minute, and we've nothing to eat. Why don't we just go home? But we can't! We can't just go home! It's all on my account that the poor fawn has been captured by the witch. Fraternising with humans! That human is me! We have to try and rescue him! That lot of good we can do. Shut up, you! What do you think, Susan? I don't want to go a step further, and I wish we'd never come. But I think Lucy is right. We must try to do something for Mr. whatever his name is, the Fawn. I agree. But I'm worried about having no food. Why don't we go back and get something from the larder? Well, there's no certainty we'll get back into this country once we're out of it. I think we have to go on. Yes. So do I. Right. <laughs> to talk to me. All right. What is it? Look, we don't even know where this fawn's imprisoned. No. And another thing. How do we know he's in the right? We've been told this queen's a witch, but we don't know she's in the wrong. Yes, but the fawn saved Lucy. Well, he said he did. How do we know that? Peter! Peter! What is it? There's something moving. Where? There, among the trees. Where? There. It's still there. What is it? Whatever it is, it's dodging us. It's something that doesn't want to be seen. Let's go home. What is it? Some kind of animal. Look. Look, there it is. It's a beaver! I saw its tail! It wants us to follow it. The question is, should we? I think it looks a nice beaver. Yes, but how do we know? 
We just have to risk it. I mean, it's no good just standing here. And I feel I want some dinner. Come on, let's give it a try. Keep close together. We ought to be a match for one beaver if it turns out to be an enemy. Further in. We must go further in. We're not safe in the open. of Eve. Well, with some of them. Shh, not so loud, please. We're not safe even here. But what are you afraid of? There's no one here but us. There are the trees. They're always listening. Most of them are on our side, but there are those who would betray us to, to her. You know who I mean. If it comes to talking about sides... How do we know you're a friend? Not wishing to be rude, Mr. Beaver, but uh, we are strangers. Oh, uh, quite right, quite right. Here is my token. It's my handkerchief. The one I gave to Mr. Tumnus when he was crying. That's right. Poor fellow. He had only a moment before his arrest and managed to hand it to me. If anything happened to him, he said, I was to meet you here and take you on to... They say, Aslan is on the move. Talk here. I must take you where we can have a proper talk. Trifle. <laughs> Merely a trifle. So Mrs. Beaver is expecting us. Do you see those two hills? My house is between those hills. Edmund, come on. Mrs. Beaver, I found them. I found them. Here are the sons of Adam and the daughters of Eve. 
So you've come at last. At last. To think that I should live to see this day. The potatoes are boiling and the kettle's singing. And I dare say, Mr Beaver, you will catch us some fish. Oh, that I will. And you can come and help me. <laughs> That's it. Take your coats off. <laughs> Good. Good. Oh, sit down. Sit down. We'd much rather help you. Well, then. You can cut the bread. You can put the plates to warm in the oven. And you can draw some beer from the barrel for Mr Beaver. <laughs> Mr. Beaver, do please tell us about Mr. Tumnus. Ooh. First things first. Please start. <laughs> Whether we shan't have any unwelcome visitors. And if anyone has been trying to follow you, they won't be able to find any of our tracks. Now then, Mr. Tumnus, a very, very bad business. He was taken off by the secret police. But where's he been taken to? Well, they were heading northwards when last seen, and we all know what that means. We don't. I'm afraid it, it means they were taking him to her house, her palace. But what will they do to him, Mr. Beaver? Can't exactly say for sure, but there's not many taken in there that ever comes out again. All full of statues, they say it is. In the courtyard and up the stairs and in the all. People, she has turned to... Turned to stone. We must do something to save him. I've no doubt you'd save him if you could, dearies. But you've no chance of getting into that house and ever coming out alive. Oh, hang it all. There must be something we can do. This fawn saved my sister at his own risk, Mr Beaver. We can't just leave him there. To have that done to him. It's no good, son of Adam. No good you're trying, of all people. But now that Aslan is on the move. Who is Aslan? Who is? Wait, don't you know? He's the king. He's the lord of the whole wood. Though he doesn't often come here, you understand. Certainly never in my time, but word has reached us that he has come back. He is in Narnia at this moment. He'll settle the White Queen, all right. It's he, not you, that will save Mr. Tumnus. She won't turn him into stone? <laughs> oh. Lord love you, son of Adam. What a simple thing to say. <laughs> turn him into stone? Why, if she can stand on her two feet and look him in the face, it'll be the most she can do and more than I expect. No, he'll put all to rights. As it says in an old rhyme in these parts. Wrong will be right when Aslan comes in sight. At the sound of his roar, sorrows will be no more. When he bears his teeth, winter meets its death. And when he shakes his mane, we shall have spring again. Will we see him? 
Why, Dr. Aviv, that's why I brought you here. I am to lead you to where you shall meet him. Is he... is he a man? Aslan? A man? Certainly not. I tell you, he is king of the wood. Why, don't you know who is the king of beasts? You mean... a lion? Certainly. The lion. The great lion. I shall feel rather nervous meeting a lion. That you will, dearies, and no mistake. But if there's anyone can appear before Aslan without their knees knocking, they're either braver than most or else just silly. Then isn't he safe? Safe? Don't you hear what Mrs. Beaver tells you? Of course he isn't safe. But he's good. He's the king. I want to see him, even if I do feel frightened when it comes to the point. That's right, son of Adam. So you shall. You are to meet him tomorrow, if you can, at the stone table. Where's that? Down the river, a good step from here. I'll take you to it. But what about Mr. Tumnus? The quickest way to help him is by going to Aslan. Once he's with us, then we can begin to do things. We have heard of Aslan coming here before, long ago. Nobody can say when, but there's never been any of your race here before. But, Mr. Beaver, isn't the witch human? Huh. She'd like us to believe it, and it's on that she bases her claim to be queen. But she's no daughter of Eve. There isn't a drop of real human blood in the witch. That's why she's always on the lookout for humans in Narnia. She's been watching for you this many a year. And if she knew there were four of you, she'd be more dangerous still. Four of us? Well, what's that got to do with it? Prophecy. Prophecy. Down at Caer Perivel, the castle on the sea coast, there are four thrones. And it is a saying in Narnia, time out of mind, that when two sons of Adam and two daughters of Eve sit in those four thrones, then it will be the end, not only of the White Witch's reign, but of her life. And that is why we had to be so cautious as we came along. For if she knew there were four of you, your lives wouldn't be worth a shake of my whiskers. Oh, where's Edmund? He's gone! So How long has he been missing, did you notice? No, did you? His coat's not here. Perhaps he's outside. We must be off. We'd better divide into search parties and all go in different directions. What for? Well, to look for Edmund, of course. There's absolutely no point in looking for him. We know where he's gone. Don't you understand? He's gone to her, to the White Witch. Edmund has betrayed us. He can't. He can't have done that. Can't he? <laughs> Has he ever been in this country before? Has he ever been here alone? Yes. Yes, he has. And did he tell you what he'd done? Or who he'd met? Well, no, he didn't. Then mark my words. He has already met the White Witch. And joined her side. And been told where she lives. I didn't like to mention it before. 
as he was your brother and all, but the moment I laid eyes on that young fellow, I said to myself, I said, treacherous. He had the look of one who has been with the witch and eaten her food. You can always tell them when you've lived long in Narnia. Something about the eyes. All the same, he is our brother. Even if he is such a little beast. We have to go and look for him. We are not thinking of going to the witch's house. The only chance you have of saving yourselves and him is to keep away from her. But we can't! Why don't you see? She wants to catch all four of you. She's thinking of those four thrones at Care Paravel. Well, once you were all four inside her house, her job would be done. And there'd be four new statues in her collection. Is that what she'll do to Edmund? No. She'll keep him alive as long as he's the only one she's got. To use him as a decoy, as bait, to catch the rest of you with. <laughs> to turn your brother and your sisters into stone. I didn't say that. She wouldn't do that. You know she wants to capture them. If she doesn't turn them to stone, what will she do? I don't know. I don't suppose she'll be very nice to them, but it'll serve them right. All these people that say nasty things about her are her enemies. Probably half of it isn't true. She was jolly nice to me anyway. Nicer than they are nice to you she's a witch she's the queen of this country and she said i could have as much turkish delight as i liked she's also going to make me a prince so one day i'll be king and i'll rule all of this so disappear <laughs> make some decent roads. Daylight's almost gone. Dark soon. I'm not afraid of the dark. Aslan. He's our only chance. It seems to me, my dears, that it's very important to know just when your brother slipped away. Had we talked about Aslan before he went? I don't remember. Yes, we had. He asked whether the witch could turn Aslan into stone too. So he did, by Jove. And just the sort of thing he would say too. And was he still here when I said the place to meet Aslan was the stone table? Because if he was, then she'll simply sledge down in that direction and get between us and the stone table and catch us on our way down, and then we'll be cut off from Aslan. No. If I know her, the moment your brother tells her that we're all here together, she'll set out to catch us this very night. You're right, Mrs. Beaver. We must get away from here. There's not a moment to lose. I don't like the look of her house. Well, it's too late to turn back now.
stone cold. That's it, stone. Yeah, you can't hurt me. What a stupid thing to do. It would serve you right if it came to life and bit your head off. old stone wolf. Who's there? Stand still, stranger, and tell me who you are. If you please, sir. My name's Edmund. And my name is Morgrim, chief of the White Queen's secret police. Why are you here? I'm a son of Adam. I met Her Majesty in the woods the other day. And I've come to tell her that my brother and sisters are now in Narnia. Quite close, in the beaver's house. She especially wanted to see them. Mm. I will tell her, Majesty. You stand still right there and don't move as you value your life. You told him. You betrayed your own brother and sisters. Oh, shut up. Come inside. Come in. Fortunate favorite of the queen. Or perhaps not so fortunate. you again and again to bring the others with you but I've done my best your majesty they're in the little house on top of the dam up the river from here with mr. and mrs. beaver Good. and your majesty somebody else has come to Narnia Aslan Aslan here. Is this true? If I find you have lied to me. Please, Your Majesty, I'm only repeating what they said. Aslan. Aslan! Have our sledge made ready and use the harness without bells. No warning. We'll creep up silently and burst upon them. <laughs>
Good luck. Tea. Sugar. Matches. Mrs. Beaver, we're wasting so much time. That's what I say. No, no. Oh. We can't set out on a journey with nothing to eat, can we? Oh, oh, I think two or three okay, loaves out of the that. crock over there in the corner. It will not do to have the little brat fainting on the way. Bring the human creature food and drink! Turkish delight for the little prince? Take with you the swiftest of your walls and go at once to the house of the beavers. There, kill everything and everyone you find. If they are already gone, make all speed to the stone table. But do not be seen. Wait for me there in hiding. You must come fast, Majesty. Yes, yes. I have to travel many miles to the west to find a place where we can safely cross the river. If you overtake those humans before they reach the stone table, you know what to do. <laughs> Mrs. Beaver, oh, we really must be on our way. Oh, we've still time before she arrives. Well, don't we want as big a start as possible? For to reach Aslan and the stone table before her? Oh, we can't get there before her, whatever we do. <laughs> Bless you. She'll be on a sledge and we'll be walking. You mean we've no hope? <laughs> Now, don't you fuss. Just get me a clean handkerchief from the pile over there. Of course we've a home. Now, we can't get there before her, but we can keep under cover and go by ways she won't expect. Perhaps we'll get through. <laughs> Perhaps! True enough, Mrs. Beaver, but it is time we were out of this. Majesty, the sledge is ready. No bells? No bells. We'll creep upon them silently. Come, you. Ah, 
Not too heavy. <laughs> ah, there. there. Oh, that's fine. Oh. Right. I suppose the sewing machine's too heavy to take. Oh, yes, it is. You don't really think you'd be able to use it on the run now, do you? Well, I can't abide the thought of that witch fiddling with it, <sighs> breaking it, or stealing it, likely as not. Oh, please. We must hurry. Please. Yes, yes. Already. <sighs> At last. Well, let me have one final think. Then we'll go. I promise you. here as much as possible. She can come this way. Quite right, Mr. Beaver, quite right. You couldn't bring a sledge down here. Come on, come on. That's right. No tracks. And the scent is cold. Well, do you still believe she's going to make you a king? All the nice things you said about her sound pretty silly now, don't they? Admit it, you give anything to be with the others now. Even Peter. We must be glad of it. Why, anyone following us will find no tracks. Hmm? That's right.
Oh. This is an old hiding place for beavers in bad times. And it's a great secret. I know it's not much of a place, but we must get a few hours sleep. There, if you hadn't all been in such a fuss when we left, I'd have brought some pillows. Well, it's dry anyway. I wish the floor were a bit smoother. I'll never get to sleep. Ah, I've just the thing. What have we here? This is a nasty knock for the witch. I tell you, her power is crumbling. What do you mean, Mr. Beaver? Come and see. Come on. Hurry. Didn't I tell you that she'd made it always winter and never Christmas? Well, who is this? I've come at last. She's kept me out. She's kept me out a long time. But I've got in at last. The witch's magic is weakening. The great king Aslan is on the move. <laughs> oh! Oh, 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 a toast. A toast. of this speak vermin or do you want my little man to find you a tongue with his whip <laughs> what is the meaning of all this gluttony this waste this self-indulgence where did you get all these 
Please, Your Majesty. We were given them. And, if I may be so bold as to drink Your Majesty's very good health... Silence! Who gave them to you? F f speak! Please. Father Christmas. What? He has not been here! He cannot have been here! Say you are lying, and you shall even now be forgiven. He has, he has, he has! Yeah! Please don't! As for you, let that teach you to ask favors for spies and traitors! And now, for your presence, Mrs. Beaver. For you, a new and better sewing machine. I'll drop it in your house as I pass. If you please, sir, it's all locked up. Locks and bolts make no difference to me. Oh. As for you, Mr. Beaver, when you get home, you will find your dam finished, the damage from the frost mended, a new sluice gate fitted, and all the leaks stopped. <laughs> Son of Adam, Peter. Yes, sir. These are your presents. And they are tools, not toys. The time to use them may be near at hand. Bear them well. Daughter of Eve, Susan. are for you. You must use the bow only in great need, for I do not mean you to fight in the battle. And know of the arrow that it does not easily miss. And remember, when you put the horn to your lips and blow it wherever you are, I think help will come to you. Now, Eve's daughter, Lucy. In this bottle is a cordial made from the juice of fire flowers that grow on the mountains of the sun. If you are hurt, or if any of your friends is hurt, a few drops of this cordial will restore them. The dagger is to defend yourself, but only in time of great need. For you also are not to fight in the battle. Why can't I? I'm sure I'd be brave enough. <laughs> that, that is not the point. After the battle, there will be other work for you to do. Now, here is something for this very moment for you all. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, and may you meet him soon, Aslan, the true king! My Peter, what a wonderful sword. Is it very heavy? Oh, really now then, heavy. now then. Don't stand there till the tea gets cold. <laughs> Just like men. Take the tray in, and we'll all have breakfast. <laughs> What a mercy I thought to bring in the bread knife.
Don't sit staring, fool! Get out and help! Move! Come on! It's no good, Your Majesty. We'll never sledge in this door. Then we must walk! We'll never overtake them walking. Not with start they've got. Are you my counsellor? Or my slave? Do as you're told! Cut the harness from the horses, they can find their own way home. But bring your whip. This is no ordinary Thor. This is spring. Your winter's been destroyed. This is Aslan's doing. The first one to mention that name again will be instantly killed.
have come, Aslan. Welcome, Peter, son of Adam. Welcome, Susan and Lucy, daughters of Eve. And beavers, welcome to you, who have guided the sons of Adam and daughters of Eve so bravely to me. But where is the fourth child? Oh, Aslan, he has tried to betray them. He has joined the White Witch. That was partly my fault, Aslan. I was angry with him, and I'm sure that helped him to go wrong. Please, Aslan, can anything be done to save Edmund? All shall be done, but it may be more difficult than any of you can imagine. Meanwhile, let the feast be prepared. Come, son of Adam, and I will show you a far off sight of the castle where you are to be king. firstborn and will be high king over all the rest. After him, he will go to his mistress, the White Witch. Now is the chance to rescue the fourth son of Adam.
Rise up, Sir Peter Wolfsbane. And whatever happens, never forget to wipe your sword. Morgram? Dead? Aslan will be after us. You better fly, Your Majesty, you better fly. Silence! There need be no flying. You! Go fetch my werewolves and the spirits of all dark trees. And I... I shall summon the others to come to me as speedily as they can. Come, all who are evil. Come, ghouls and dogs. Come clues, hags, spectres, people of the toadstools. Come incubuses, wraiths and horrors. Come ifrits, sprites, walkies, woozies and nettings. Fetch all who's evil works for me. We will fight. Have I not still the one? Shall not the ranks of the enemy turn to stone, even as they come? Come to me, evil! Four thrones in care Paravel. How if only three were filled? That would not fulfill the prophecy. Yet it might be better to keep this one. For bargaining with. Oh, yes. And have him rescued! Then we better do what we have to do then at once. I want the sacrifice on the stone table. That is the proper place. That is where such things have always been done before. Could be a long time before the stone table is again put to its proper use. Then let it be done now. And here. Prepare the victim. I brought you some milk. Thank you. Yes, you wake up. Some milk. Son of Adam, daughters of Eve, your brother has come back. Where is he? He is with Aslan. Oh, dear. Here is your brother. There 
is no need to talk about what is past. I'm sorry. That's all right. I am sorry. <laughs> yes, Edmund. <laughs> Sire, there is a messenger from the enemy. Mm. Let him approach. What is your message, son of Earth? The Queen of Narnia, an Empress of the Lone Islands, desires safe conduct to come and speak with you. Queen of Narnia, indeed! Why, of all the cheek! Peace, beaver. Tell your mistress that I grant her safe conduct on one condition. That she leave her wand behind at that rock. She expected such a request and agrees. My people will go with you to see that the condition is properly observed. But what if she turns them to stone? I think they're thinking the very same thing. But it's sure to be all right. He wouldn't send them if it weren't. <laughs> Have a traitor there! His offense was not against you. Have you forgotten the deep magic? Deep magic from the dawn of time. You know what is written there, on that very table of stone. You know the magic that was put into Narnia at the very beginning. You know that every traitor belongs to me as my lawful prey, and that for every treachery, I have the right to kill. You know, Aslan, that human creature is mine. His life is my property. His blood is forfeit to me. Come and take it, then. <laughs> Fools! Do you think your master can rob me of my rights? He knows the deep magic better than that. He knows that unless I have blood, as the law states, the whole of Narnia will be overturned and will perish in fire and water! It is true. I do not deny it. Oh, Haslan, can't you do something? Work against the deep magic. Wait, all of you. I will talk to the witch alone.
I have settled the matter. She has renounced her claim on your brother's blood. But how do I know this promise will be kept? Come. We must move from this place at once. It will soon be needed for other things. Tonight, we encamp in the forest. I'm dying to ask Aslan how he's arranged matters with the woods. Everyone is. And nobody will. He certainly showed it, didn't he? Don't underestimate the power of the witch. The witch and her army will almost certainly fall back to her house and prepare for a siege. You may or may not be able to cut her off and prevent her from reaching it. So, you must have two battle plans ready. One plan is for assaulting her castle. The other is for fighting her and her forces in the forest, for it will be difficult to know where she will decide to strike. Yes, I see that, but... You must post scouts at all outlying points so that she cannot steal up and catch you unawares. But you'll be there yourself, Aslan. I can give you no promise of that. Is he still there? Yes. So sad all afternoon. He's not going to be there. At the battle. He's leaving it to me. To us. But he wouldn't desert us. Just as we need him. Of course he wouldn't. Unless he had to. <laughs> Children. Why are you following me? We couldn't sleep. May we come with you? Yes. Yes, I should be glad of company tonight. You may come if you will promise to stop when I tell you and leave me to go on alone. We promise we will. Thank you, Aslan. Thank you. 
Can't you tell us? Are you ill, Aslan? No. Not ill. Lay your hands on my mane so that I can feel you are there. Must stop. And whatever happens, do not let yourselves be seen. Or your lives will be in danger. Remember, do not let yourselves be seen. You would save the human creature? As agreed in our pact, I will kill you instead of him. <laughs> and so the deep magic from the dawn of time will be appeased. But when you are dead, what is to stop me? From killing him too! You have given me Narnia forever! You have lost your own life and you have not saved his! In that knowledge, Aslan, despair! Follow me all! We'll set about this war and crush the 
human vomit and the traitors. Now that the great fool, the cat, lies dead and the whole land of Narnia is mine. They've 
gone. Shouldn't we be getting back to camp? If there's going to be trouble, we can't just leave them lying there. Oh, my legs are almost giving way. I feel so tired. Well, we have been up all night. Care Paravel. Do you suppose we'll ever reach it? They're doing something worse to him! Come on! his body alone. But who has done it? What is it? More magic. Yes. More magic. Aslan! Oh, Aslan! You're not dead, Aslan! You're not a... Do I look like it? Oh, you're real! You're real! Aslan! Aslan. Oh, I feel my strength coming back to me. I feel it is time for a roar. You'd better put your fingers in your ears. and we saw you. The witch knows the deep magic, but there is a magic deeper still which she has never known, for her knowledge goes back only to the dawn of time. In the stillness and the dark before time ever began, there was a different incantation. When a willing victim who has committed no treachery offers his life in a traitor's stead, the stone table will crack, and death itself will be denied. Oh, I see. We cried our heads off, and you knew all along it would be all right. I knew of the old incantation. But it has never been put to the test until now. You took that risk to save Edmund. Come. We've a long journey to do. You must ride on me. <laughs> Daylight will catch him unprepared. Form the battle lines and keep all silent. Hmm. I've never yet met a gruel or a hag who could keep silent. We stay silent all.
witch's castle. Hold tight. What's Aslan doing? I don't know. Once the feet are put right, the rest of him will follow. That wasn't exactly what I meant. Bless me. I must have fallen asleep. Now, where's that dratty little witch that was running about on the ground? She had a magic wand. And she turned you to stone. Eh? What's that? Turn you to stone, she did, and I've just restored you. Well, drop me. She's gone. Aslan has saved you. Aslan. I just wish I knew where those girls were. With Aslan. Wherever he is. Well, I wish they were all here. Especially Aslan. His work is not yet over. If the witch is to be defeated, we must leave for the battle at once. But how are we going to get out? The gates are locked. Hey, you, up there. What's your name? I am Giant Rumble Buffin, if it please your honor. Well then, Giant Rumble Buffin, let us out. Certainly, Your Honor. It will be a pleasure.
Quick, Lucy. Well, what can I do? Don't you remember what Father Christmas gave you? Others wounded. Yes, I know. Wait a minute. Daughter of Eve. Daughter of Eve. Others are also at the point of death. Must more people die for Edmund? with the witch really was? Of course not. But oughtn't he be told? No, Lucy. It would be awful for him. Think how you'd feel if it were you. Well done, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> Good lad. <laughs> but where's the white witch? She will trouble us no more. Friends of the great battle, we shall sleep here tonight. And tomorrow to care Paravel where the prophecy will be fulfilled. <laughs> Once a king or queen in Narnia, always a king or queen. 
Bear it well, sons of Adam. Bear it well, daughters of Eve. Adam's flesh and Adam's bone sits at Care Paravel in throne. The evil time will be over and done. Mustn't worry. He'll be coming and going. He needs to be free. And he has other countries to attend to. But will we manage without him? Oh, he'll often drop in. But you mustn't press him. He's not a tame lion, you know. He's wild. And he always will be. And so the seasons pass and the years pass. And all Narnia grows in gratitude to its young rulers. They have made good laws and kept the peace and saved good trees from being cut down. They are all loved. The stalwart warrior, King Peter the Magnificent. Queen Susan the Gentle. King Edmund the Just, and my first little friend, Queen Lucy the Valiant. Here is a great marvel. I seem to see a tree of iron. Madam, if you will look closely upon it, you will see it is no tree, but a pillar of iron with a lantern set thereon. By the lion's mane, a strange device. Just remember, that thing's a lamppost. Listen! It's the MacReady. has gone by at all since we climbed into that wardrobe which is why we felt we had to explain sir how the four fur coats from the old wardrobe are missing and the galoshes it uh, was very cold there and we didn't even know then if we'd ever get back and it was the most sensible thing to do we'll go back and try and look for them oh it... come now nobody wants you to go back searching for a few moth-eaten old coats You do believe us, sir? Naturally. But you won't get back to Narnia again by that route anyway. Not by the wardrobe. No. No. You mean we may go back? Well, of course you'll get back to Narnia someday. Once a king in Narnia, always a king in Narnia. By the way, I 
shouldn't mention this to anyone else. Unless you find that they've been there, too. But how will we know? Oh, you'll know. You don't think you're the only ones to have had such an adventure, do you? Oh, bless me. What do they teach them at these schools? 